Welcome to Vention Tips, part one of our Machine Logic Quick Start series. In today's video, we are going to use Vention's publicly available pick and place design with a belt conveyor to demonstrate the three steps needed to program your custom application. If you'd like to follow along with today's video, click the link in the description below to open this public design. Before we get started, make sure you have a machine motion controller, an actuator, and end stop sensors in your design before you navigate to the Machine Logic tab. Let's break down the three steps to program your machine. Step 1. Configure your machine. Step 2. Create a visual sequence. Step 3. Create a UI using UI Builder. Step 1. Configure your machine. We will start off by configuring the actuators we would like to move. Start by clicking Add Actuator at the bottom left corner of your screen. You will then be prompted to select the actuator you would like to configure from the drop-down menu. All associated automated components will be auto-configured. If there is a unique sensor placement, navigate through the sensor drop-down list and select the sensor's unique ID. You may find the unique ID by clicking the sensor in the CAD. You may also configure pneumatics as well as input and output sensors. In this example, we will be configuring an input through beam sensor. Step 2. Create a visual sequence. Part 1. Create your application. Build your machine logic application using a combination of sequences and commands. To begin, click Add Application to start creating your program. Machine logic will simulate the main sequence, therefore building your child sequences with various motion commands. We recommend executing those child sequences in the main sequence as good practice to organize your program. Let's start by building our first child sequence, called our homing sequence. Note that it's always best practice to home each actuator before doing any other command. Click Add Command to create a motion command. The Actuator drop-down menu selects the actuator you would like to move. Click on the Motion drop-down menu which filters out all the possible motion commands for the selected actuator. Select the type of motion command you would like to use, in this case, move to home. We'll repeat the same motion for the x-axis. Next, let's build our conveyor child sequence. In this sequence, we would like to move the conveyor continuously until a box reaches the through beam sensor. The conveyor would then stop for 5000 milliseconds. Click on the Add Motion drop-down menu and select Start Continuous Move. Then click on the Add Weight Digital Input command to tell the conveyor to keep moving until the through beam sensor state is level 1. Stop the conveyor for 5000 milliseconds. For the pick and drop sequence, we'll use the Move to Position commands for our linear actuators. We can move the actuator to the position you would like to move it to, then once the desired position is reached, we'll click Teach Position to confirm. Another option would be to manually input the position value you would like. We'll speed through this and show you how the rest of the sequences are built. As mentioned before, once we're finished with all our child sequences, we'll execute them through the main sequence. Step 2. Create a visual sequence. Part 2. Simulate. Let's simulate now. 
The active sequence will be highlighted in green as it is executed in the tree view, located on the left panel. You've just successfully completed your first machine motion simulation. Congratulations! Step 3. Create a UI using UI Builder. Now that you've built your machine logic program, we can create an operator interface for that application. We'll first edit our visual sequence to trigger only the conveyor child sequence when a button in the UI Builder is pressed. To do so, we'll add a wait for event command at the very top of the child sequence. To generate a message to the UI Builder, click Add Command and Add Message to let the operator know when the pick and drop child sequence is completed. Now let's build our operator UI. You could have multiple tabs to organize and configure your widgets. Drag and drop the elements below into the grid. A configure panel will pop up for elements that require configuration. For the button, the topic and message names should match the wait for event topic and message names from the visual sequence you would like to refer to. The possible topic and message options should auto drop down. To see the state of our ThruBeam sensor, drag and drop the digital input display element and link the ThruBeam sensor to the element. Let's finish up by adding a label to the operator. Once you're happy with your program and operator interface, you may simulate in play mode or download and upload it to your machine controller to deploy. Thank you for watching and happy programming!